And glory to God. Let's give a hand praise unto the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to praise him. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Worship him. Give him the glory that he is due. Amen. He is the Savior. Hallelujah. He is the Savior who died on the cross. Hallelujah. Have give him some praise. Give him some glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy to be adored. Glory to God. It is an honor for me to be here a Saturday afternoon preaching his name. Hallelujah. Speaking in his name. Hallelujah. Letting you know that you can, you have life in his name. Hallelujah. Because he lives in me. He lives in my wife. Glory to God. And he lives in you. Glory to God. Well, pastor, I don't know if I have Jesus in my heart. You can settle that today, once and for all. Because he will save you. Hallelujah. He will save you. Hallelujah. Confirm you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. How many here know Jesus? You can say that I know him. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know him. Glory to God. Amen. You know when you know him, it's going to have an effect on your life, right? Amen. When you know him, there's going to be an effect on your life. Hallelujah. It, you can't be the same after you know him. Once you come into a personal relationship with God and he reveals himself inside of you, to you, you never be the same. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can never be the same. Hallelujah. You can never be the same. Hallelujah. I thank God that 30 something years ago I was born again by the Spirit of God. I was in Special Forces training. I was in the military 21 years. I was in Special Forces training in Fort, in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Hallelujah. I was not thinking about preaching the gospel. That was the last thing on my mind. Preaching the gospel was like some kind of crazy idea out there floating out there somewhere. That was not what you go to that training and get selected to, to do that training to do. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't find God, brother. He found me. Hallelujah. He went into hell and found me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He found me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I was there and I, and I was just invited to a church service and I went to the church service and the preacher preached about Jesus, about his life, his death, his resurrection. And I received them in my heart. Something in my spirit told me you need Christ in your life. You're a sinner. You need him in your life. <clears throat> you need his forgiveness. You need his grace. You need his mercy in your life. And that day I went to that altar and I knelt down and I said, Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you in my heart. Hallelujah. Father, by your grace and mercy, please save me, Lord. I can't go to heaven without you. I can't have a relationship without you. I can't know you even without you, Lord. Do a work in my heart, Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank God that 30-something years ago, hallelujah, I was born again by the Spirit of God on that experience, hallelujah. And I come to Christ, and Christ changed my entire life, hallelujah. I told my wife I wasn't going to get all, 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 all robbed up, but amen. I just can't not get robbed up talking about Jesus. Amen. <laughs> when he's alive, he's living in you, and you know him in the power of his resurrection, you can be the same. Hallelujah. And so I want to share with you a word today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That can be a blessing to you. Glory to God. And for those of you, glory to God, watching us on Facebook, um, and those of you in Puerto Rico watching family in Puerto Rico, glory to God, I will put this message there in Spanish, glory to God, so you can be able to get it. Uh, me and Pastor Weather, we've been here in Warner Robins 12 years. We have been pastoring here. We do outdoor services. We've done hundreds of outdoor services out here and nursing home services, prison services, I mean, glory to God, anywhere you can preach outdoors, we're, at, we're there, we're in there, hallelujah. 
preaching the word of God, hallelujah, because we know the importance of reaching the lost with Christ, hallelujah. Reaching the lost, hallelujah. Reaching the drug dealer. Reaching the prostitute with the gospel. Reaching the drug dealer with the gospel, hallelujah. If the, if we don't reach them, who's going to reach them with the gospel? Hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah, I mean, you got a chance of ride, driving on a highway and seeing a Jesus save sign or something like that. But who's going to tell you how he saves? Who's going to tell you about his love, his mercy? Amen. Glory to God. God chooses his church to do it, hallelujah, to reach the lost with the gospel. And that's what our ministry has been about and always been about reaching the lost with Christ, hallelujah. Amen. This ain't about a building. This ain't about an empire. This ain't about offering. This ain't about none of that. Glory to God. This is about the Christ that died on the cross and rose from the dead. Hallelujah. And I know by the Spirit of God, if I do His will, He'll take care of me. Hallelujah. And He always has. I'm still here 12 years. That People are praying to God that I... That I would quit or something, but praise God, it ain't going to happen because if God has you here, how are you going to quit? He, he's the one that's with you, amen. Glory to God. So praise God, I give honor and all of the glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, and what he has done in my life and knowing that he can do it in anybody's life that is willing to come to him with a whole heart and come to him with a true heart. God is ready to do a work inside of you. Glory to God. So let's go to the word of God. Amen. Praise God. I, I want to direct you. I want to thank the Warner Robins Rehabilitation Center staff. Glory to God for allowing us to be here today. Amen. Glory to God. I want to thank my wife for being here with me today. Glory to God. And to be able to, to share with you the gospel and to share with you the word of God. I won't be too long with you. Amen. I understand Glory to God, you have things to do. So glory to God, let's get into it. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, and starting at verse 1. And we read in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit, amen, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Somebody say that with me. No confidence in the flesh. Hallelujah. That though I might also might have, also might also have confidence in the flesh, that if any other man thinketh that he were off, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, <clears throat> as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is by the law, blameless, but what things were gained to me, I counted them lost. Somebody say, I counted them lost. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, hallelujah, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that in which is through the faith, somebody say the faith, through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Amen. That I may know him. Somebody say that I may know him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection. You got it, brother. Praise God. Amen. Which is up. And the fellowship of his sufferings. And being made conformable unto his death. That if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the life. Esther Willa, can you please pray for me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on today, Father. Yes, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord Jesus, that you open our understanding, yes, Father. Lord. That you let your word flow into our minds, into our hearts, Father. Let us be a vessel, Lord Jesus, that can produce, Lord Jesus, something fruitful, Lord Jesus. 
We ask you today, Lord Jesus, that you touch every heart, every mind, every soul, this building, this facility, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us so that we can spread the gospel and to these people, Lord Jesus, that they might not know you. But if they know you, Lord Jesus, that we ask you that you revive the fire that's inside of them, Lord Jesus. Yes, that they Lord. can continue seeking you, Lord Jesus. That, that they can continue being productive, Lord Jesus, and speak to others the word of God. Your word, Lord Jesus, that might flow like living waters into their hearts, into other people's hearts. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And I Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Beloved, we see here in the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church of Philippi, and he's encouraging them that no matter what they're going through, to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we can go through stuff, we can go through sickness, we can go through different things, but Christ instructs us in his word to rejoice in the Lord through all that we go through, good, bad, and ugly. Hallelujah. Beloved, is it, and it is important that we not only rejoice in the Lord, but we rejoice in the right things. Hallelujah. Somebody say the right things. Hallelujah. And not in the wrong things. Beloved, it is important, glory to God, that we rejoice in the things that our faith is established in two basic things. One, the first one, a personal experience with the person of Jesus Christ. Number one. And number two, the correct doctrine con of, written in the Bible concerning salvation. Beloved, I shortly preached to go in the scriptures and the street, glory to God, of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. And those of you who have read the Bible, you know what it says, that not everybody that says, yea, yea, Lord, shall answer to the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. I was preaching that in the street. Amen. Not a lot of people were happy about that, but praise God. Amen. We got to say it because there's a lot of people that go to church that are really lost. Amen. It is. Amen. And glory to God. Amen. And, and I was emphasizing on the point that it is possible for your faith and works, even your church service, to be in vain if it is not established in the right things. Amen. Everybody hear that? Glory to God. I preached, glory to God. I, I was listening to a sermon by uh, Pastor John MacArthur, glory to God, and he was presenting some results in a survey known as the State of Theology Concerning Belief Positions of Evangelicals. Amen. In the world, we are considered, no matter what our church affiliation is, Church of God, Church of God in Christ, AME, Baptist, whatever, we are co considered uh, evangelicals. Amen. That's what they call us. And there are basically three things that make you, in the eyes of the world, an evangelical. Amen. One, glory to God, is we are people who believe in Jesus. Glory to God. We believe generally in the Bible. And we feel, number three, the need to share our faith with others. Those three things basically make you an evangelical in the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The evangelicals, but even though that is nice, glory to God, the survey also showed the astonishing fact of how separated evangelicals can be in our beliefs. Because we're raised in different church atmospheres and we acquire different things that we hold on to into our worldview, glory to God. And amen, and, and it's especially the fact do you know that, that over 50% of evangelicals, according to the survey, amen, believe the Bible not to be literally true, although 100% true? That's a church doctrine. The church believes that the Word is the infallible Word of God, amen. That's doctrine of salvation, amen. But we live in a Christian in a church now that doesn't believe that this book is completely true. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, uh, over 50% of people believe that God accepts worship from all positions. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus said what? In John 14 and 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. 
Does the word say that? Forever. Praise God, it does, right? Forever and ever. Forever and ever, amen. So the Bible says that, glory to God. But yet, people that go to Christian churches don't all believe that. And even 40% by the survey, a surprising 40% was glory to God saying that Jesus was a good teacher, but not God. Amen. Now, beloved, these positions of belief are in stark contrast and directly against what the Bible teaches about salvation. And it raises the question, how can the Christian church get that way? What has happened to the Christian church? What has happened to the church that we don't hold the doctrine of the salvation of the Bible? Weakness of mankind. The weakness of mankind, but I'm going to tell you what one thing that it truly is. We don't want doctrine anymore. See, the Word of God gives us doctrine or dogma or teachings or what the Bible says concerning Christ is non-negotiable. Amen. And we and the church, in order to present itself and not offend the people in the world by preaching the gospel that you're in sin, you're a sinner, without Christ you're going to die and go into hell, and that you're lost without God, we want to preach a message that is more people friendly. And when we do that, that is a very dangerous thing because we compromise the gospel. And we preach a Jesus that is not the Jesus of the Word of God. Amen. We got to be very careful about how many preachers I got here today. Glory to God. Amen. You're a preacher too? Praise God. Amen. 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 We have an awesome responsibility to preach the Jesus that is in the Bible. Because if you have faith in a Jesus that is not this one, that Jesus is not going to save you. Hallelujah. So uh, it is very important. I don't want to ever stand before God and Jesus tell me, you did not preach my word. You preach the prosperity gospel. You preach the word of faith gospel. You preach oh, everything else. You did not preach my gospel, son. No, if there is one thing that God's not going to accuse me of is that. I'm going to make sure that I preach the word of God and the gospel. Hallelujah. Because I want to hear the words, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. How many want to hear those words today? Hallelujah. I want to hear those words. I want to do what's right. I want to preach what's right. I want to live what's right. Because I want God walking with me. Hallelujah. And I want to walk with him. Because he's my Lord and my Savior and my Father, my Corrector. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. So Paul, glory to God. So the church, because we have strayed from doctrine, because doctrine is restrictive, amen, in nature. Doctrine says... This is right and this is wrong. Doctrine will hurt your feelings because if you if, if you don't have a worldview that's a biblical worldview, doctrine will say, hey, I love you, but your worldview is wrong. Your belief system is wrong. Your belief in Jesus is wrong. Your belief about salvation is wrong. Hallelujah. And that's why doctrine is so important. And when we get away from doctrine, the Bible teaches that in the latter times, men will stray away from the what? From the truth. They will stray away from doctrine. They will stray away from what the Word teaches. And they will give heed to itching ears, the Bible says. They'll have itching ears to hear fables and stuff that is not true. Amen. And that's why that is the result of what we live in the church in 2023, basically the last couple 50 years. We live in a church that has strayed generally, strayed away from the teaching of the Word of God. Amen. And we got to pray, saints. We got to pray. We got stuff going on in our government that is crazy. Allowing stuff that is crazy. And I'm going to tell you, if we, if, if, we, if we don't get God involved, if there is not a spiritual awakening in the United States of America, God help us. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. The brother just went, and you're exactly right. We have got to get God on our side, regardless of race, regardless of culture. We got to stop all this racial stuff and get to God. Amen. Because God teaches that we are all created in the image and in the likeness of him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When God made us of one blood, we all bleed red. If everybody would have cut themselves right now, we're all going to bleed red. Hallelujah. Christ bled red. Hallelujah. And we have got to hold on to Christ and hold off and, and push away that stuff that's not in the Bible. Because in the end, we're going to stand before God. Now, Paul warns the Christians here in two verses. He says, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. And Paul is referring here to a group of people known as the Judaizers. Somebody say Judaizers. Judaizers. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And what was happening, these were people from the Sanhedrin court. They were Pharisees and Sadducees that had took on an evangelistic mission, an antichrist evangelistic mission. So Paul would go to places and he would preach the word of God and grace by salvation and by faith. In Christ, glory to God. And the and the Judaizers will come and they will say, yeah, that's all good. But in order to be really saved, have you ever heard that before? In order to be really saved, you got to be circumcised and you got to follow the law. Now, we, we, we like Paul and all of that, you know, but he's just, he's just a little bit out there in his theology. You know, I mean, you know, he just ain't all there. He's, a, you know, he's a washed up theologian, a washed up preacher that, you know, he... He left the sand either, you know, I mean, you know, I, God help him, you know, we're, we're just trying to straighten everything out for you here. You, to be saved, you have to be circumcised and you have to follow the law. Amen. That's what these Judaizers were, were, were preaching, glory to God. And Paul was like, no, no, we don't follow the law. The law has been fulfilled by Christ. Now, yes, there is things in the law that we observe. But we don't worship the law because Christ fulfilled the law by his death on the cross. He paid the punishment of our sin, of the world's sin on the cross. Amen. And so he did not come to take away the law, but he came to fulfill the law. Amen. So glory to God. So Paul, so Christ was here and Paul was telling the people, no, you don't need that because all you need is faith by you are saved by faith by the grace of God. Amen. And anything that is added to that is a doctrine of demons. Hallelujah. We got to call it what it is, church. We got to call it what it is. We can't sugarcoat it because people need to know truth. Amen. Anything that glory to God, hallelujah. And so, so Paul would preach and shortly after they would come and they would pervert the teaching of Paul. They would first and criticize and lie about Paul's qualifications and, and tell him, glory to God, that he was not appropriately qualified to preach the word of God. They wanted to label Paul as one of the fishermen, like a Peter or a Thomas or, or a James, you know, like one of them guys that were, they, you know, they were fishermen, you know, they, they don't know nothing about, they didn't go to theology school and all of that, you know, glory to God. Say they did this in order to present themselves as best qualified. You ever seen that in church, glory to God? You have some minister that comes up and they berate all the other ministers in order to present themselves as the one and true only apostle of God. I mean, you know, I I got the best education. I got the best this. I got the best that. And, you know, I, I appreciate what they do. But you need to listen to me because I have the word of God. Ever heard that? Glory to God. Ever seen that in the church? I've seen it a thousand times. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, praise God, they did it to, to present themselves as best qualified, and then they would propose the idea, and people ate it up. You want to know why they ate it up? They're weak, but why are we weak, brother? Because we don't know the Word of God. 
Do you know that by the American Bible Association, of people that go to church, 10% of Christians that go to church, 10%, have read the entire Bible one time. More than 50% have never even opened the Bible, but go to church. They just hear what the preacher says. They don't, they don't verify if it's true. They don't know if it's true. They just take what the preacher says and that's it. One percent, beloved, of that number, one percent have read the Bible more than once. That is astonishing. Glory to God. And so what we've had is a dumbing down of the Word of God and the Christian church and now nobody knows the word of God and what it really means and what salvation really is and what Paul was really saying and what Christ preached and what the apostles preached and when we don't know that then anybody can come in with any doctrine and we automatically believe it because we're not looking at the validity of the word of God we're looking at the credentials we're looking at the diploma from the university of the education Glory to God. We're looking at everything else except the validity of Christ and what the Word of God says. But let me tell you, just because you graduated from a Bible theolo theological university doesn't mean that you know the Word of God. In fact, I, I have seen, I was given in a class on apologetics and, and you would be amazed with some theologians that are graduated from Harvard and places like that have come up with against the Bible. And you're like, how can you graduate from Harvard and not know the plan of salvation? I don't want to go to that university. I won't go if you paid me to go. Glory to God. I'll give you a scholarship to go to Harvard. I refuse it. You guys don't have the word. I'm sorry. Glory to God. Because I want to be saved, brother. I want Jesus living in me. I don't want to trust in my theology. I want to trust in him who died on the cross for me. So glory to God. Hallelujah. So they, they labeled Paul and then they will come to tell glory to God to follow the, the, the law of Moses. And Paul called them dogs and evil workers because they were perverting the gospel by adding steps unto the established doctrine of grace by, of the grace of salvation by the grace of God and repentance and faith in the person of Jesus Christ. It's kind of like, beloved, I mean, how many of you have had children? Glory to God. And, uh, and, and, you know, in the first five years, your child is born, your child is in your home. Glory to God. And I'm a pastor, glory to God. So I raised my children in the nurturing and the admonition of the Lord. I raised my children to believe in Jesus. I had four children and four, glory to God, stepchildren, eight children in all, and every one of them I've raised them in the gospel, every single one of them, glory to God. And when they're with you in the first five years, glory to God, that you tell them about God, that they go to church with you, they get involved, they're in Bible studies, they're in all this stuff that you do in church, they see you preach the word of God Sunday after Sunday, you know, and they're there reaching and seeing and they know about Jesus and all of this and everything is fine and dandy until they reach the age of six years old and they go to school. And then when then they go to school. And then they go to school and they meet other students and they meet other teachers that do not hold the same philosophy and the same faith that you do and so now they start interacting and injecting ideas that are against God and so now the training of your children is contaminated by other philosophies Darwinism Darwinianism Glory to God, evolution, uh, take your pick, glory to God, there's hundreds of them out there, uh, glory to God, and they, and they meet other theories and other ideas that, that are contrary and that directly oppose the word of God, and by your time your child meets, reaches middle school age, you wonder 
why they're not really that interested in church anymore. Man, they used to sing in the choir. They don't sing in the choir anymore. What happened? Watered down. They watered down. They glory to God. Got in their heads with all this evolution, Darwinism, and all this other stuff. And now your child does not believe in God. And then they go to a, a college, amen, and they meet some liberal professor that really hates God. And now they'll call you, Dad, Mom, I don't believe in God anymore. How do you don't believe in God anymore? I mean, didn't you see all the miracles that he did, all the stuff he did when we were growing up in the home? Well, you know, Mom, I've been looking at this God thing for two weeks. And I don't believe in God anymore. I said, really? You So you figured out in two weeks that there is no God. I've been studying God for 58 years. For glory to God. I've been studying God for over 35 years. And I still don't know everything about him. Amen. But you in two weeks, you Googled it. And in 15 minutes, you know that there's no God. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so Paul calls them evil workers and he even calls them dogs because they they are enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Paul was preaching the gospel to these people and the Judaizers, they understood, they had one thing. They understood the value of doctrine. And it's and it's and it's glory to God. And it's and it's a crime shame how other religions have a better understanding of the importance of doctrine that many times even in the Christian faith glory to God and more and religions glory to God they heart more on the doctrine of their religion to make sure that the people know the doctrine of the religion if we could do that in the Christian faith my God we will go you wouldn't have people being you wouldn't have people being duped by prosperity gospel preachers and, and, send, your, and send money in for your oil and, and prayer napkins and all this other crazy stuff that people ask for. Amen. Because we will know the word of God and we will know, we will know who those people are. The Bible calls them glory to God thieves and glory to God wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. Glory to God. We'd be able to call a spade out the way it is, amen. Not because, and tell them, you don't preach the gospel. What you preach is not in this book. I know what's in this book. You don't preach it. You don't follow it, and you definitely don't live it. So why should I follow you and go to your church if you don't validate the word, the authority of the word of God? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, so glory to God. And so Paul here, from verses, now... The, the glory to God. They wouldn't go completely against what Paul said. But they would add, sneakily add to it. Amen. You know the worst deception. We live in a world of deception. Amen. And a lot of that deception has, they throw a couple of Bible verses out there just to get you going. To make you think that they have God. They'll throw a couple of scriptures and you say, yeah, I remember that. That's in the Bible. And these Judaizers, they did the same thing. Because the deception that is most dangerous is the deception that has an element of truth. Amen. When a deception has an element of truth, it's dangerous. Because now you have to know the whole truth in order to discard it. Amen. And so, <clears throat> here... So that's why it is seen as the most dangerous. Now Paul comes from verse 4, 7 to verse, uh, verses 4 to verse 7. He begins to bring his credentials. Amen. Not to boast, but on the contrary, to show the Christians in Philippi that he too had those type of lineages and privileges. Amen. And those accolades of having the right birth, the best school of theology, the, the zeal and the passion for the law of Moses. And so Paul is bringing his credentials and privileges here in a physical sense. And he lists them here and to show them that if privileges and accolades were the thing that mattered, Paul would be on the top. Amen. Because he was better than all of them. Glory to God. Paul was the best theologian that you had out there. And so Paul lists them here 
in Philippians 3, 4, and 6, and I'm going to read them for you. And though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I mourn. Circumcised on the eighth day. So we have a religious privilege and an accolade. Of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. Now we have a racial and ethnic privilege. Amen. Uh, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a cultural privilege, glory to God. As touching the law of Pharisee, now, uh, 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 glory to God, he has a theological, educational privilege. Boy, is there a lot of people out there in the world that put their trust in education, glory to God. There's a lot of people, when you look at some of the worst, glory to God, uh, 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 of deceivers of the Christian faith, Glory to God. You look at people called uh, uh, Amen, uh, uh, the Jesus Amen. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of these men, I mean, glory to God. Some, the, the Jesus movement and all this other Even it, it sounds catchy. And most of these people that are in these movements are very well educated. Master's degrees of theology. Bachelor's degrees in social and science and theology and divinity. Associate's degree in missions and in other church programs. Hallelujah. Some of these people are very well educated. They will put my education to shame. Hallelujah. But how can you get so well educated and lose sight on the word of God? Hallelujah. You know, I was reading about, I don't know, has anybody ever heard of, of a preacher named Charles Spurgeon? He was an older preacher in the 1800s. And he refused to go to college because he wanted to humble himself and just trust in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. They offered it to him. Amen. And most of the preachers in this area had degrees of, uh, in London and all of that. And he's like, no, I, this is my, I want, I want a BA. I don't want a bachelor associate's degree in glory to God divinity. I want a BA in Jesus. Hallelujah. I want my bachelors of associates to be in Christ. Hallelujah. And in the God who saves. And in the God who comes in your life. Hallelujah. That's what I want my knowledge to be on. Glory to God. And so. <coughs> amen. Glory to God. And so Paul. Showing here. That unlike. And then so. And so concerning zeal. A motivational privilege. And then concerning righteousness. Which is in the law. He said I was blameless. And there's a moral privilege. And so Paul is showing here that unlike the accusations and defamations of the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin and other religious leaders, he was better trained and kept the law better than most people. Amen. And beloved, in our day we use the same type of accolades to, and, and privileges to impress folks with how great we are and how educated we are and how spiritual we are and how wonderful we are. My God, at last, uh, you go to a church service and they and they spend half an hour telling you the degrees of the preacher. How many degrees they have, every place they studied, and every church they pastored. Who cares? Amen. We're not here to worship the preacher. We're here to worship him who died on the cross. Amen. And glory to God. And gave his life. And so glory to God. We spend so much time. Now, I know that it is good to validate people to make sure that they know God, but if you preach the gospel, the Holy Ghost is going to validate you. Hallelujah. I don't want to be validated by people. I want to be validated by Him. Amen? I want people to look at me and say, that person has been with Jesus. Amen. That person knows God. Amen. And, and it really brought joy to my, heart, to my heart because like when I visit this old elder brother, glory to God, who's also a preacher and was a pastor. Amen. He looked at me and said, God is on your side. He don't even know my name. I've never met him before. But he sees God in me. Glory to God. Some of you, you might, you probably weren't even planning on staying here today. You were going to come check it out and walk out. But something in your heart said, there's something. This guy's got something. I don't know what it is, but there's something. I need to sit down and hear this. I need to sit down and see this message. There is something about this message. This crazy guy that's up there.
Glory to God. Bang it on that page over there, on that box over there. There's something about them. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it there. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a three-letter word that I have in my life. It's called God. That's why you're here. Because God wants you to be here because he knows I'm going to preach truth. He knows I'm going to tell you about Christ. He knows I'm going to tell you the gospel. He knows I'm not going to fit to turn to my church affiliation and, and my education. I'm going to tell you about him who died on the cross. Hallelujah. And that you put your faith in him. Glory to God. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. And glory to God. We, should be, we shouldn't be preaching with how great we are. We should be preaching instead how great Christ is. How wonderful Christ is. Glory to God. How loving Christ is. How forgiving Christ is. How merciful Christ is. We put more importance on the man instead of the God of the man. Hallelujah. And but Paul brings a very important point for us to understand. And that is that none of these things that he announced. None of these external things help you be saved. None of them. We're not saved by our heritage, folks. We're not saved by our race. We're not saved by our ethnic background. We're not saved even by our church affiliation. We are saved by grace, hallelujah, through faith in Jesus Christ, hallelujah. In any teaching, glory to God, hallelujah, that is in contrary or in addition to the, that, that adds that what is accounted by God, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, they count it as a cursed gospel. Paul said, if I am Galatians 1 and 6, if I or any angel preach to you another gospel, another Jesus, let them be what? Accursed. Anetha Maranetha. Hallelujah. Did he say that in the Word? He did. Why did he say that? Because there's people that are preaching different Jesuses. Amen. Than the one that's in the Bible. And so he says, look at here, Philippians 3 and 8. And glory to God, doubtless I count all things but law for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, of Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, dung. Everybody, that I may win Christ. Now some Bibles, they say rubbish. But it's not rubbish, beloved. That word is not rubbish there. That word is the Greek word skubalon, which means manure, excrement. Now, if you had a piece of paper right beside you, glory to God, if you had a piece of paper on the floor, that could be rubbish, amen, right? But I guarantee you if there was cow manure or dog poop right next to you, you ain't going to treat it the same. You're going to get right out of that chair because you don't want to have nothing to do with it, amen. And that shows the repulsiveness that Paul had towards the external things outside of Christ, towards valuing your relationship with God based on external things rather than internal things. Ephesians chapter 2 says, For by grace we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. All of these outer things are repulsive and insufficient for our salvation. And so Paul says, I count them all but done. Not putting my confidence in, in my heritage. Not putting my confidence in my education. Not putting my confidence in what tribe I come from or where I come from or how, how great I am or how educated I am or how honorable I am. I'm not putting my confidence in my theological training. I'm putting my confidence in my salvation of my Savior who died on the cross and rose from the dead. And he brings up, and this brings up a very important question in our lives, beloved. What is your salvation based on? What, are, what is the confidence of your salvation based on? Is it on what church you come from? Is it on your theological degree? Paul said, I count all things but loss that I may win Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so here's where Paul gives his value to the worldly accolades and the worldly privileges and entitlements. He said in Philippians 3, 7 and 8, But what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. Yeah, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of Christ, Jesus my Lord. 
for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, amen, that I may win Christ, amen. Because the Judaizers, like a lot of people, present Christ as something that you add to what you already have. But Christ is not an addition, glory to God. Christ is not an addition to what you have, hallelujah. You don't get Christ and add him into your life. But Paul brings the gospel that I surrender it all to Jesus, glory to God. Uh, this is what a lot of people are preaching today, that if I have a business and I add Christ to it, I'm going to be blessed. If, uh, then automatically I'm blessed and my business will prosper. Amen. I will become rich materially and financially. If I'm seeking wealth and riches, all I have to do is get Jesus. And I'm going to hit the lottery. Hallelujah. They presented Christ not as the great pearl that Jesus said, that the merchant will sell everything that he has in order to buy the pearl. Meaning that when you have the pearl, you've surrendered everything else. But no, today's preachers preach, you can get the pearl and everything else too. Glory to God, hallelujah. And that is not the gospel that Christ was preaching, glory to God. When you look at move, uh, uh, glory to God, religious folks, even in our day, like the word of faith, movement of prosperity, gospel movement. They present the gospel as the pearl you get and add it to what you have. A great pearl that is no more than a magical lucky token that you add to whatever you have in order for you to get whatever you want. Hallelujah. But that's not the gospel that Paul is presenting here. Paul is presenting a gospel that you have to leave and count all things but lost. Paul is presenting a gospel that requires the believer to surrender it all to Jesus in order to win Jesus. And so Paul is presenting here, yea, though I have all these things, though I have the proper birth, I have the proper culture, I have the proper education, I count it all but dumb that I may win Christ. Uh, I was a Hebrews of the Hebrews. I was the purest of these things, but these things mean nothing as far as eternal life. I have that I am willing to count all of these things as done or as completely insignificant, repulsive, that I may win Christ. And so one thing that is not taught in today's day is that we have to surrender it all to come to Jesus. Amen. The old days we preached it. Hallelujah. Today, it's nothing like that. Glory to God. We have to surrender it all. We have to get out of the thinking that Jesus is just an addition to our agenda, in addition to our program. No, when we get saved, we give all that up that we may win Christ. That, beloved, is the biblical gospel taught by Christ and taught by his apostles. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He is not an addition. Hallelujah. He is not an accolade. No, Christ is Lord of all in your life or he is the Lord of nothing. And if he is not the Lord of your life, then consequently he is not the Savior of your soul. Hallelujah. And verse 3 and 9, and Paul says, And I want to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, which is by my own doings or my own upbringing or by my own law, but by following the law or by following religion, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God, which is by faith, that is the proper gospel. That the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus by faith through the grace of God. For by grace are we saved by faith and that on ourselves it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast, and fall. And then here's the kicker in 310. That I may know him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. Come on now. Say, say that with me. That I may know him. I want to know him. And the power of his resurrection. I want to know him. I don't just want to go to church. I want to know him. I don't just want to sing in the choir. I want to know him. I don't just want to preach. I want to know him. 
I want to have a personal relationship, intimate relationship with Christ. I want him in my heart. Glory to God. I don't just want to preach. I don't just want to sing. I don't just want to go to church. I want to know him and have him in my heart. And I want to belong to him and follow in obedience what he says. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Now, there's a lot of people that sing about God that don't know God, beloved. There's a lot of people that go to church regularly, but they don't know God. In fact, there are even people that preach and teach that do not know God. We have people that are some that, that you see them on national TV and some of the gospel channels and glory to God, they have great ministries and they have multi-million dollar churches and but hundreds of thousands of people in the church. But they don't know God because they don't preach the Jesus of this Bible. Amen. Come on now. And that raises up the essence of this message. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. So Paul is saying, I'm not just satisfied with just going to church. I'm not just satisfied with singing in the choir. I'm not just satisfied with preaching. Paul says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want God living in me through the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And not just that, I don't just want to shout with him and praise with him, Paul said. I want to have fellowship with him in his sufferings. And the things that happen to Christ, are they happening to you? The rejection that Christ received do you receive it in your preaching? The hatred that people had, that the religious folks have for Christ, do they hate you the same because you preach the gospel? Or are you loved by everybody, saved and unsaved alike? As my old bishop used to say, boy, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hallelujah. Because some that, what was he saying? We can only come to Christ when we have a personal evaluation of who we really are and where we're really at. And we say, God, glory to God. I come short of the glory to God. I'm not worthy to go to heaven. I'm not worthy to be saved. But by your grace, Lord, you saved me. By your grace, you died on the cross for my sins, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you have a salvation like that, boy, you are saved up and down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be very careful what you believe in. Exactly. But you can't believe wrong and still be wrong. Amen. Glory to God. Good point. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Paul said that I may know him. I may know him. I may know him. I don't just want to go to church. I don't just want to be in the world. I want a relationship with him. I want my name in the Lamb's book of life. And Christ said, glory to God. I don't just want to glory to God, just be in church singing at on bottom. I want to have the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to have the fellowship of his rejection. Because I know that if I suffer with him, sister, I'll reign with him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Christ said, remember the word that I say unto you. The servant is not greater than the Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they've kept my saying, they will keep yours also. The apostles and the disciples in the early church did not count suffering as a bad thing. In fact, they counted it as the thing that validated you as a real Christian. Amen. Not like we hear in the world today and in the word of faith and prosperity gospel movements. Movements that promote the ideology that if I have Jesus, I can cancel everything else out that I don't agree with. That I'm going to be blessed. If I have Jesus, I can get great material gain, prosperity, financial wealth. Beloved, Christ, neither his apostles, never taught that. They never taught that. He never taught that. The apostles never taught that. 
Glory to God. The apostles counted suffering for Christ as a badge of honor. Kind of like a combat infantryman's badge for, for an infantryman. You can't get one unless you go to combat. Hallelujah. And get in a firefight. And when you wear it on your uniform, glory to God, it tells everybody else who you were and what you did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it, 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 it's a badge of honor. The Bible says in Acts that the apostles had joy that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name in the gospel. And that's because Jesus told them, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Glory to God. I want to ask you today, that are, con are you connected with the fellowships and the sufferings of Christ? Or are you accepted by everybody? Paul lays this as a priority in Christianity because maybe people, many people see Christ as a religious token. Many see people Christ, see Christ as a wise sage with good fortune cookie advice. Hallelujah. Many people see Christ as an addition to your own uh, agenda or program. No. The Bible teaches that Christ comes and he takes over in your life. Hallelujah. Not what the world preaches that Jesus is an additional lucky magical token or religious token that you add to your life or that you wear like a necklace or something like that. Paul said, I may know him in the power of his resurrection, that I be found in him. Hallelujah. Connected with him. Somebody say connected. Connected, connected with him. In him. Somebody say, in him. Glory to God. I don't just want to be a guy that sings about a church, about a Christ that I don't know. Go to a church that worships a Christ that I don't know. That I don't have a personal connection and relationship with. I don't want to preach about a God that I don't know. No, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him enough where he is working in me. I want to know him enough where he is sanctifying me. I want to know him enough when, if I'm wrong, he's correcting me. Glory to God. I want to know him not as an addition, but one that takes over in my life and rules. Because I don't just want him to be my Savior. I want him to be my Lord. Hallelujah. When you receive Jesus, you receive him as Savior and as Lord. You can't choose which one you want to receive. You get the whole package or you get nothing. Hallelujah. If he's not Lord of your life, he's not the Savior of your soul. Hallelujah. If he's not the absolute ruler of your life, he's not the Savior of your soul. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 that many shall say to me in that day, Lord, did we not preach in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do works in your name? And Christ is going to tell them, depart from me, I never knew you. Why is that? Because they never received him. You did church stuff, but you never had him in your heart. Glory to God. And then finally, Paul says, glory to God. If by any means that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And most people, when we read that, they say that I might get the resurrection of the dead. But I urge you to look carefully at the text. Because Paul says it by any means. I mean, I am willing. I am ready. I am able to do whatever it takes that I might attain. And that word attain means katanao. Katanao. Which means to come over to a place, especially in opposition to external forces that is fighting against you. To reach as a goal, to accomplish, to achieve, to push forward, to overcome, uh, uh, to reach an end zone. Glory to God. Beloved, there is a process in that word attain indicated here. It's not just a, I get Christ. I attain. Hallelujah. There is a process here. There's a battle. There's a fight that you have to understand that you're going to fight as a Christian. Glory to God. The best way to describe it using the analogy of sports will be in football. When the receiver gets the ball from the quarterback, amen, and tries to run it into the end zone. Now, glory to God, that's all great, but there's a team that's out there to stop him, right? Glory to God. There's a defensive line and a defensive team 
that's out there to tackle that receiver trying to get to the end zone. Amen? But now, the receiver is not going to stop and come fool all the people that are, that are and, 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 and come fool all the people that are trying to tackle him, right? Because then he's going to get a penalty. So what is he doing? He's dodging, moving to the left, bumping around, gets a hit over here, and he bumps around, and he's moving towards the game because the end goal is to get the football in the end zone and score a touchdown. Amen. Not to directly fight against those that are stopping him, but to evade them. And that's why the Bible says in the battle, in the armor of God, God gives us the feet of the preparation of the gospel of feet, that we may swiftly move. Glory to God. Amen. And when we are serving Christ, you have to know that there are demonic forces that are after you. Glory to God. Amen. They're after you to stop you, to hinder you, to depress you. To, to set you stop preaching the gospel. The devil cannot, if you're called by God, the devil can never stop you. Because if you're called by God, the devil can't overcome God. He's a preternatural being. He's not a supernatural being. He can't, he's not in the same playing field as God. Never can be. The devil can never be in the same playing field as God. So if God calls you to do something, there's nothing the devil can do about it. The only thing that the devil can do is make you stop. He can stop you. And he can't directly stop you. He can make you quit. He can make stuff so hard that you just quit. But if you don't quit, beloved, if you don't quit, he can't stop you. Eventually, he's going to... And you're going to go on doing what God called you to do. Because you know that your strength is in Christ. Hallelujah. My strength is in Christ. Not in a big church building. Not in getting money. Not in an airplane. I don't care about none of that stuff. Glory to God. My strength is in Christ. And I know that as long as I hold on to that, there ain't no devil on earth that's going to stop this ministry. Stop me. Stop Pastor Willis. Stop anybody. Because we're called by God to hear. And by God calling us here, he has invested himself in us to keep us, amen, and take care of us that we may preach the gospel here. Somebody praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, in other words, like the receiver is not going to stop and come through all the defensive players. He's going to move to get that ball in the end zone. So in other words, Paul is saying he is willing to do whatever it takes as a Christian, which includes suffering hardship, to attain the resurrection of the dead through Christ. He's willing to suffer sickness, to attain the resurrection of Christ. He is willing to, su to suffer the backbiters and the haters and the liars and the, and the perpetrators that he may attain the resurrection of Christ. That he might gain and work and work. I mean, see, this is the whole thing about God. God doesn't just, don't just want you to preach. He wants you to gain and work and, and experience in your life, him in your life. Hallelujah. He don't just want you to be somebody who preaches. He wants you to be somebody that has a relationship with him. And glory to God that you experience his spirit in you. That you experience his work in you. That you experience eternal life in you. That you have that working through a personal, intimate relationship with God. And that glory to God by the end game means to attain the resurrection of the dead, which means that he may be resurrected as Christ was resurrected and be in heaven as Christ is in heaven and be with God as Christ is God. That is the end game of salvation. Are you going through a process where you're fighting to attain the resurrection of the dead? Because Christ is with you and he is in you. And glory to God. He loves you. And he didn't just save you just so that you could say I'm saved. He saved you. 
and prepared you because you have a fight. Amen. You have a battle. You're fighting against Satan, satanic forces, and people that he uses, glory to God, to stop you, to make you quit, to give up your calling and election. The Bible says work diligently to make your calling and election for sure, because if you do, you'll never fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. We want to thank 